Hey, top of the morning to you. I'm Michael, or as the grandkids call me, Rue. Thanks for jumping on this morning with Rue Doodles live right here, wherever here is. Here's all over the place. I know that. Um, as a matter of fact, I painted over the weekend. Some of you caught the show on Saturday morning. I was at my daughter's studio, and uh, I think it's the first time I've had eight different countries on at the same time. So Saturday morning must be the day to go international. Thank you for being national. You guys, are so many of you who pile on from all over the country here. Um, but it's it's really interesting to see uh, the show just populate with uh, two in the UK. And one lady said, oh, blimey, she said. It must be he loves his tea with the bag still in it. And, and I do. I keep the bag in my tea. And I know that drives some of you completely batty. Does this guy have no... I don't think I can go to my desk shot. There it is right there. And what is the matter with that guy? There's the tea. Just, the bag just floats around down in there. The thing I like about builders is, this is make mine a builder's tea. And, um, of course, you know about builders, right? They're, um, they're not a sponsor of the show yet. No, actually, they sent me, they sent me a box of tea bags and a hat and a bag. So how can I say they're not? Uh, I love it. They just said, hey, we love, uh, and I sent them a painting, but, um, they said, we love you talking about our tea. And I go, I love your tea. I Because uh, people ask me, what kind of tea do you drink? And not that it makes any difference. My goal is not to be out to change you in any way, unless it's to change you to be more creatively and to be more confident if you want to be, if you want to think like an artist and to be more um, shareable and to be more kind and just go through the whole list of words that I really do like. There's some great words out there. I've been into rewords lately. You know what rewords are? Re this, refresh, renew, rejoice. Woohoo! Um, there, there's just some great ones in there. Uh, isn't it funny? I just said rejoicing. Woohoo! I didn't know my mind was going to do that afterwards. Uh, there's a lot of things I don't know about my mind. All right, but I hope you're well. Let me say hello to some of you here and uh, put my glasses on so I can see. And yes, for those of you who haven't been with me 125 or 30 days, these glasses up here are really not real. They just, uh, the lenses fell out of them and I like them. In fact, they made me, they didn't make me, they encouraged me to buy my other glasses, which are now clear frame uh, readers. And I, I like them, but now I just wear them for a headband because I'm, I'm, uh, I go about 16 months between haircuts just for fun. It's a budget thing. You know, it's just like, pfft. so, uh, uh, yeah, that's it. All right, here we go. Hey, let me just say hello to somebody because you're populating the show in a very fast pace here. I can't even read all of these, but I'm going to spend about two minutes reading a bunch of them. Here they are. So thanks for jumping on Donna and Lori and Karen and Donna and Shanlon and Trish and Irma, Patricia, Jan Janice, Holly, Holly from Maryland. Okay, thank you for being here. Terry Tardy from Coos Bay. Uh, Joanne Morning, Kim Sheets, sneaking in a peek at work. Oh my gosh, missing her painting friends. Hey, thank you. You're not being a poor teacher. I believe that's what you do in Salisbury. See, I'm connecting with you people because I know you're in Salisbury, which is the home of Cheerwine. I know you get tired of that. Well, those of us who don't see the signs every day or have the semis or the trains run by or the old building is tremendous in Salisbury. I like Salisbury. It's about an hour and 20 minutes from where I live, something like that. Uh, Chris, good morning to you. Belinda, Lisa, Glenda, um, Paint, Wild Man, Paint. Michael Ash Ashburn, my dear friend in uh, Bean Blossom, Indiana, holed up in a mountain cabin somewhere with his dog and it better be a video camera. So, but I'll see you in a few days, brother. Um, he and I got a project we're working on down in the mountains of Western North Carolina. I'm in Charlotte now, so about two hours away from me. We'll go over, put on our mask and social distance, but shoot some shots of an outside property there. Let me, uh, my sleeves are bothering me. Let me roll up my sleeves here. One second, get these up out of the way just a little bit. I'll have paint all over them before the time's over. Notice I just have my vest on. You know, sometimes I have to look in the monitor to say, what in the world? My wife said, is that what your hair looked like on the show this morning? I'm going like, hon, this is the only hair I have. I'll keep it. Julie, welcome to you. Teresa, Jan Campbell, Fern, Bob from the beautiful cornfields in Iowa. <laughs> Bob, it sounds like a radio show. Hey, this is Bob from the beautiful cornfields in Iowa. Don't you love that? I, I didn't want to be an FM jock, but I was an AM jock for a while. I had the, the uh, show, the, the words that I use sometimes for my painting show, the informal, informative, incisive, incandescent, incomparable, indescribable, but humble little radio show. 
So I did radio for a while. Everybody should do radio for at least one day until they throw you out the studio door. Judy Yaw, fog on town, time to paint. I love it. Judy showing. Got Judy and Judy lined up together. And Jackie, Pat- Patricia Brooks. Morning to you, John Robert Small. Thank you, Annette. Morning to all from you, way up north in the cold. Sandy and Denise and Philip. Philip, you got a great sense of humor. Love to see your stuff. Rad Headlam, midnight here, Rue. Yeah, I know it's midnight in Australia, but thanks for joining. You know, you can just sip a little more of tea, mate, and um, um. Get your husband to make you some better tea today. Oh, better coffee. Yeah, he was making you poor coffee the other morning. You said that. Lee Packis from uh, Central Florida. Lee, man, you know what? You did do it. You sketched a pen that I thought was keepable, shareable. Hold on to that, okay? I thought it was great. Michelle Butler, nice to see you. Uh, Rose, Judy, good grief, people. Thank you for jumping in. Um, Margie Curie, thank you. Teresa, Tina, Gracie. It just goes on and on. Michelle, nice to see you. Ann Schneider, nice to see you. Um, Nancy Griggs, hi from Georgia. The whole entire state. I lived in uh, the metropolis of Lawrenceville. That's it, Lawrenceville. I lived in Lawrenceville, Georgia for uh, about 16 months. And uh, there was nothing north of uh, Pleasant Hill, that whole area in there. So it's kind of fun to, uh, to get back in. Move down there to do something crazy. Let's rule, <laughs> Jill. All right, thank you. I'm gonna jump through here. Golly, Jonelle, um, Sharon, Jen, Tamberly. Thank you all for being on the show. Thank you for giving up your time. I, I'm grateful. Uh, what else would we have done in the last hundred and? I gotta count up how many days it is. I should start keep counting again. Now with all the weeks, it's it's got to be nearing 135 or 140 days or something like that that I've actually painted. Maybe, maybe a little less. But with the painting class, September's class, I think, was a hit. Some of you, thank you for your wonderful comments about uh, what you learned. Um, and I'm not saying this in false humility, but I'm, I'm really humbled. I, I really mean it because I got into this saying, kicking and screaming a little bit, saying I'm not really a teacher, but I am an encourager of other people to be artists and to take what you have your heart, your hands, your head, and tie those together with some style that you can share to make somebody else's life a little better. So let's get started here this morning. Let me just go to the desk. And um, Foggy, Ohio, Linda says this morning. Here we go. Here's the desk. Here's the scene from the desk this morning. Got a couple books laying there. I do have this book. Um, See, I thought I put a marker in there. There it is. Put a grasshopper on the page. Found a word, I found a little sketch that I had done a long time ago, and I hadn't really finished it. So some of you may have not seen this book. I think the majority of you now have seen every or heard every story that I have. I'll probably be doing reruns next season. <laughs> but the book is called Weird and Wonderful Words, and I literally just picked it up at a bookstore uh, at a sale for a buck and a half or something like that. And so no insult to... Uh, uh, Aaron McKean, who who wrote it, but because um, it's really kind of been fun, I've learned some great uh, words. In fact, Ash has learned a couple that he's throwing out in bigger meetings now. So, so Ash, here's your new word for today, buddy. Oh man, and I just turned it. Rats. I just had it. Was it a B? It seemed like it was a B word here. B word. Was it a B? Yeah, here it is, right here. All right. So here's the word. I found it early on, but what what I did. And I encourage you to do, and I encourage you to do now. It's a little chilly here this morning. That's why I have on this vest. And and so what I encourage people to do was to, there I am, um, find something that would, would instill a little bit of creativity. Sometimes artists sit down at the paper and they go like this. And I have everything laid out here. This happened to me when I first started watercolor painting or first started paint, painting at all. And I went, huh, what am I going to do? What am I going to draw? What could I possibly put on paper that I might enjoy, that might bring joy to me, but also might bring a smile or joy to someone? What what is that? It's a little harder as an artist on paper than it is an artist as a storyteller. Because the storyteller, usually, your mind's usually jumped by something. It's kick-started off. It's jump-started is a word I was looking for. One of, one of my storytelling tapes over the years, I call it tapes because, yes, my first uh, storytelling albums came out in cassettes. Remember those? Use a pencil to tighten them up. 
Uh, it was called, I'm going to have to beat your tail, T-A-L-E. And so one storyteller tells a story. In fact, Ash and I, I wrote a, I wrote a play um, that was called the 43rd Annual Folklore Embellishing Watermelon Wrestling Seed Spit and Cedar Woodland Contest and how we came in third. That was the title of the play. And the whole thing about the play was uh, that one storyteller walked out and said, you know what I heard one time? And he went into this embellishment and the other one came along and said, that ain't nothing. And and so he goes, well, you just told that, that ain't nothing. And then they would go back and forth. So it's the one upmanship of storytelling. So that naturally takes off on its own. Painting sometimes when you're in a studio or you're in front of a blank piece of paper by yourself, that's harder to do. You just go, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to paint. Oh, I could paint this little measuring tape. And you go, why, why would you Why would you paint that? Well, because it's kind of good to learn how to sketch things. I could paint this harmonica. There's a harmonica on my desk. Ah, sounds better than I could make it look. So I'll paint it. I could paint um, this anvil. That's a good little thing to do because I'm a collector of anvils and I have a blacksmith shop. So I could go to the blacksmith shop and paint. So you, you see my point is that, oh, here, this is always good. This is urban sketching at its best. Paint a pair of glasses that are lying there with the shadow. That's cool. Actually, that would be a cool drawing. So now you're getting closer, see? So you need that first idea. So that's what I do on this show. Sometimes I'll just throw out an idea. A few weeks ago, I threw out a grasshopper to some of my 857 folks on the, the painting show on 857 September. Now, 857 October, Rue 857 October is still, the registration is still open. You can go to rudels.com. But... Here's the thing, um, and, and when I think of that, I throw out a little commercial because that's how people get involved, right? You got to know before you can. So here's the thing. So I threw this out, and then a grasshopper started populating on the Roost Crew page and all these other pages where people were painting. And then uh, Saturday, I threw out a little uh, bluebird, a little fat bluebird that I painted that I'd been reminded of in my daughter's studio that I painted. I was scanning the video over, and I went, whoa, th that's that's one of my birds, and I was excited that she had kept it. and. And then I looked on the back and it had a note to her daughter encouraging her three years ago to swim fast. And just that morning she was swimming while I was painting and she, she qualified for state. She's a, she's a sophomore in high school and just a screamer, swimmer. It's unbelievable. Just naturally gifted. And so I saw that little bluebird, and then I saw some bluebirds pop up. I love that when that happens. So this book just gives me ideas to paint. I'll find a word, and I'll see if I could tie that word into one of my style of crazy paintings. In this case, roosters, because I paint roosters. I paint roosters because my name is Han, and that means German, which means proud rooster. So here we go. So there it is. There's the story. See, there's a story to everything. Everything is connected. All right? I'm missing some music this morning, huh? Sounds kind of quiet in here. It's just me, right? Well, let me let me just get some music going here. I had some teed up, but I don't know what happened to it. Ah, here it is. A little bit. It's not for you as much as it is for me. Shandlin says, Michael, you have inspired me to draw every day, even though I have a banana number in my head. Oh my gosh, thank you. You know, thank you for being for being open about that. You have a, a trimmer in your hand. And so, you know what? A lot of people paint out of therapy, and it's good. You get that pen, and you get in there, and you start going, and you use it to your advantage. But here's the thing. It helps you focus on something else. You're going to make cards that you're going to send to other people. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. Good afternoon from Germany. Han, are you German? Yes, Sabine, I am. But I know none of my relatives. My uh, great, 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 great was a stowaway from Hamburg. And somewhere along the line, they changed his name from H-A-H-N to H-A-U-N, which is more of an English spelling. Um, probably lots of reasons that he wanted to change his name. I have a friend who was a Stark that had uh, they uh, he had an E on his name, and he said, well, it was from Stark to Stark. To, they just put an E when they came into Ellis Island, and he said, we didn't say anything. We just let them change it. So, yes. Okay. Um, and it's funny, Lisa has this book. Some of you actually bought this book. And Jackie, thank you for being here from Melbourne, Australia. It's late there, too, so have another cup of coffee. I'll finish it in about an hour. So just have fun. So here's what I'm going to do. You know, I'm always talking about how I don't like ballpoint pens, but I do like a good roller ball sometimes or an inexpensive doodle pen. So I was in Chad I was in um, Greenville, South Carolina, walking on the art walk down there, and I walked in this little shop, and I saw this guy's journals who were just spectacular. They were just brilliant. And he said, yeah, I journaled all over London. We went over there with a group, and 
And uh, I said, okay, I'm a pen snob. And so I reach in my pocket and I pull out this pen. And I said, there it is right there. And he goes, oh my goodness, that is, I go, yeah, it's a, it's a German made pen. And he goes, I said, it's a fountain pen and I have this ink in it that I really like and the ink. And, and so we started talking. It's the one-upmanship of storytelling. And he said, I said, so can you share with me what you used? I, I love to ask other artists what they use in pens. And, and, and he said, oh, I use an R2. And I go, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know what that is. And I said, expensive, I bet. And he goes, unbelievably expensive. And I said, okay, okay, just give it to me cold. I, I'm going to buy one. What is it? Let me see it. Let me just see it as it lays out here. There it is right there. There's the logo showing. I'm turning it so you can see it. There it is, R2. He said, you heard of this thing called the dollar store? Well, yeah, I've, I've heard of that. And he goes, two of them in a pack for a dollar. And I go, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Come on. So I was uh, driving around one day and I saw this thing that said dollar store. So I turn in. I'm going like, oh, my gosh, how much is everything in here? And they go, a dollar. I go, That's why they call it the dollar store. So I went in. And I bought this pen, and it's a roller ball, but it's uh, and it's a big pen. It's bigger than I normally use. It's let's see, it's well, no, it says it's seven millimeter, but I'm telling you, this thing's kind of gigantic. And so, the thing about this pen is, it really does lay down some ink, and it rolls pretty good. So it's good for. Um, I don't particularly care to sketch with it because. Uh, it writes faster than I can think. You know, it's one of those balls that just kind of goes choo -choo 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 across the paper. Anyway, so what I've done is I sketched little things with it here, and I sketched this. And the word this morning is bezoar. B e b e z o a r. Bezoar. And the word bezoar is a hard mass that sometimes forms in stomachs of certain animals, especially ones that chew their cud, goats or sheep. It can also be lumps. Um, that maybe you know as if you own a cat, a hairball. <laughs> and, and those lumps were taken out. Now, this is the weird thing about medicine in years past. Be glad you're born when you were. Those lumps were taken out of uh, cows and, and um, the, the could, could ball or the thing in their stomach or something else. And, and those were used to rub on parts if, as an antidote for healing. Who, who comes up with this stuff? Who, who comes up with this? I don't know. Storytellers do. That's what. That's who. Hey, I got an idea. Let's let's get this thing. Let's get this bizarre here. You mean bizarre? No, bizarre. Let's make sure it's called different. It's a bizarre. So here's a bizarre right here. So it's a little hairball that, um, or a, a piece of could or something. And so then I thought, you know, because we remember hairballs and cats, and so that's this is a warm up painting. All right. So just going to grab a little bit of paint here. I'm going to grab some water, spray it in my colors to just moisten them up a little bit. Um, you might find if you're working to be a sketch artist or if you're working to be a watercolor artist, um, certainly not oil painting because oil and water don't mix, but uh, watercolors, because they're watercolors and water mix. I use these little spray bottles to just wet all sorts of things. I wet the paper with it. I wet the ink with it. Softens up a little bit of everything. My water's kind of a dingy color here this morning, but I'm going to paint with it anyway. Just really go in here with the light brush and do this very quickly, okay? Somewhere on the desk is a, a piece of paper towel that I can blot this brush with. Not too much water. Go get some blue here. I like to have blue in the tail, but before I show you that, I want to show you what this pen will do. Look, this is just the pen right here. Ooh, it's drying pretty fast on this book. I'll have to show you on... Uh, on another piece of paper, made a liar out of me. But I wanted this bold sketch to come out over the words and color this in a little bit. So I'll be happy with what I come up with here. I think I want a little bit of red right here. And then I want to take a little bit of this um, ultramarine blue and make a little more red and make a little purple down in here. Yeah, kind of a purple roux. I think that's pretty cool. I don't do a lot of purple roosters. No reason for that, I guess. Don't see a whole lot of them. See how fast that was? That was about two minutes when I finally hushed and started painting. And then um, the cat looks like he should be a tabby. So let's just, uh, he's already been drawn by somebody else, but let me just go in and put some stripes here in the cat. Here we go. That make him stand out just a little bit. Uh, maybe an orange tabby. Is that why they call them orange tabby cats? I guess so. Let's just go in and touch a little more orange in there. All right, there we go. 
So a little roux there, and then the hairball should just be some good gray hairball, all right? Which reminds me of one of my favorite books of all. In fact, I have it laying on my desk today. <laughs> How convenient is that? Every now and then I just pull back and read it. There we go, so that's a good warm-up paint for me. So roux, and I would do a 10, um, 520, just to sort of date it, let me know when I came back to this story. Bizor, a small mass that forms in the stomachs of certain animals. You're not gonna use this. And, hey, you're at the, you're at the, you're at the uh, Thanksgiving party coming up, you know, this next month, and you're going like, this hors d'oeuvre tastes a lot like a bizarre. <laughs> They're going, what's that? They're going, eh, it's a, it's a hairball that, um, nah, and now's not the time. All right. So, there we go, little, little, little warm-up painting. So why do I do that? I do that because uh, I think it's both. Why do I do that? Thank you for asking. It's as much for my hands and getting the paint sort of watered up and the right consistency, uh, getting getting my place, everything laid out. It's, it's a little bit of preparation as much as it is for my mind too. It lets me start saying, okay, you're entering this place where you're gonna be creative for a little while. You're gonna think like an artist, you're gonna move forward. Rue 857, September, was all about thinking like an artist. I'm not saying I'm the greatest artist that ever lived. I would never even say anything close to that. I would just say, I've been blessed to be an artist. People go, you're an artist? And I go, aren't we all until we grow out of it? And then we're afraid to tell people we are. It is so much more fun to tell people you're writing a book than to say you've written one. Because if you say, I'm writing a book, they go, oh my gosh, tell me about it. This is fabulous. Whoa. whoa. But if you say, yeah, I'm, I, uh, I've written a book, and they go, what's it called? And you go, well, it's called uh, Strange and Wonderful Words. They go, I, I never heard of that. Oh, I never heard of that. Oh, I don't read that kind of book. And you go like, so you see my point? So when people say, are you an artist? I say, you know what? In one way or another, you bet I am. Because I think differently. All right. There it is. There's the painting for today in weird and wonderful words. Bizor. It's a kind of a hairball. Uh, which, which uh, now the book's here on my desk. There it is right here. One of my favorite books of all time. It's called Orbiting the Giant Hairball. And by the way, I don't think that uh, when uh, Gordon McKenzie wrote this book, uh, probably in, a, in the 80s. No, it looks like 96. Wow. Later than I thought. When he wrote this book, I don't think he knew that it, it, what would be happening today. How could anybody have known that he talks about how the system that people work in, where they go in and they push the time clock and they push in, they push out at a certain time. If they're 15 seconds late, they're counted off. Guess what? A lot of that's changed in our country today. People are working from home. People are not even working, but they're also, they're, they're, the system has set up. They're orbiting this giant hairball and they're doing it online and they're doing Zoom calls. And I don't think he would have uh, recognized that at all. But this is a, one of my favorite books. Uh, he was a genius artist. I'm not saying his art was the greatest art I've ever seen, but take a look. Is that to make you feel good about your sketch? There's his opening sketch right there. See it? There's a little alligator in there. <laughs> I love this quote though. Ready for this? I was made for disruption of routine. Man, I was so made for that. I was made to disrupt your routine. I was made to say, oh, now here he's gonna use the beautiful indigo blue. Nope, he's using black for that. He threw yellow in there. What was he thinking? He painted a shrimp and then he wrote a tattoo on it. I was made to interrupt your routine. Wes Siegler wrote a book in the 70s called um, Western Civilization. No, 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 Western Theology. That's what it was, Western Theology. And he said there are two kinds of people. They're pioneers and they're settlers. They're the people who are always going forward. They're always thinking, they're always planning, they're always doing, they're always coming up with something. And then there's settlers, people who just settle for things. And they build a little community and they build the house they think they want and they stay in it and they keep their door closed and they eat soup and the church bell rings on Sunday and they look out to see if anybody else is going before they go. It goes on and on and on. I, he didn't say that I did. That's just my rule of that. And I'm thinking, no, 
I married a person who's not a reformer, who's not, she's a reformed thinker, but she is a person who says, I was made for disruption. Let's throw a party and she'll have the pantry doors open cooking something. Okay. Anyway, this guy travels around and it used to. He is no longer on this planet. He went on. Uh, so let me paint something here and let me use this big old pen. What's the name of the book? Orbiting, orbiting the giant hairball. Uh, I've used a quote out of this book, and without even looking, I'm going to tell you what page the quote's on. It's on page 189, I think. Uh, he says very unconfidently. 189, I believe. Let's see. 188, 189. Look at this. There it is, 189 right there. Just to prove I'm right, that says 188 right at my thumbnail. Look at this. Look at this. He drew for Hallmark for 30 years, but he wanted these to be like children's drawings. So look at this airplane. Is that not fantastic? I mean, come on, you know it's not great, but it's so perfect that we've all had one hanging on our refrigerator door. Orville Wright is the name of chapter 19. Orville Wright. Orville Wright. You turn the page. Ready? Here we go. There's a picture of the Wright Flyer. It's a little picture in a cutout, scrapboard, little corners. That's, so that'd be page 190. Now on page 191, here's the text. Orville Wright did not have a pilot's license. Turn the page, chapter 20. Shortest chapter in any book I've ever seen. Strongest thing to remember. People go, you can't be an artist. You didn't go to art school. And I go, Orville Wright never had a pilot's license. People say, you can't be a blacksmith. And I'll go, you're living in the wrong time period. I go, Orville Wright never had a pilot's license. People say to me, how could you go do a musical album? You're not, you didn't go to music school. You don't know nothing about music theory. And I go, Orville Wright didn't have a pilot's license. You're the one that's gonna give you the permission to be an artist. Did you hear that? You're the one who's gonna give you the permission to be an artist. Will it take work? More work than you could imagine. Will you get pulled into a deep, dark abyss of a hole? I hope so. Okay, all right, so what am I gonna draw after all that? Who knows? All right, you're very interesting, Belinda says. <laughs> hey, Mike Pratt, morning to you, my friend. Hey man, I hope the firewood business is cranking up, brother. My friend doesn't really have a firewood business. He has a firewood ministry. Is that cool? He and his buddies split firewood and then they either sell that wood and donate the money or they deliver that wood to families who need to heat their homes over on the eastern part of the Carolinas. I love it, man. A good friend, known him for many years. He and Wendy um, have, have, they have a few of my root doodles hanging on their wall, which I'm uh, privileged to have such. Wrote it down, Beth says. Good morning, Karen. Welcome to be here. Bobby Keene, glad you're here. All right. Um, welcome to Fun Personified. <laughs> I don't have to grow up, Skeeter Pal says. Skeeter, you are so right. Chip Fur says, fabulous book. Hey, Chip Fur, you got a couple fabulous books. I read in one of yours the other day. My friend Chip uh, is a writer. And, and Chip, you're one of those deals where you are a writer, and I say, hey, man, I like your book. Um in places is good read but i'm into the other one though i'm into i'm into uh, uh the coffee bean book which i just forgot the title of i'm so sorry i had it downstairs all right so here's what am i going to draw with this pen a hairball sometimes you just doodle a hairball right so you just get this little thing right here Did I know I was gonna draw this? I had no idea, okay? So there it is, so there's this little, this pen, we'll see what it does on this paper if I get to it here in a second. Um, so it's, uh, let's see. They're from my Australian friends way down here on this side of the globe. I put you in there, okay, so. Just as a doodle, this doesn't need to go anywhere. It doesn't plan on going anywhere. It wasn't for anybody's own. It's just for my own satisfaction of uh, hearing my, myself tell that story 
And uh, so sometimes I'll just doodle and it'll help me think of something else coming in. So let's see what this thing does if I just put a little water on it. This pen bleeds ever so gently. On slicker paper it will, but watch it's doing. The water's breaking down the ink. And you're gonna see some Payne's gray and some gray sneak in there, pretty cool. I think I'm painting on a piece of 140 pound. Yeah, medium grade paper. It's not 100% cotton, so that'll change a little bit about how it works. Uh, sometimes uh, I just doodle and then those doodles turn into ideas for new paintings. I'm never concerned about wasting paper. Are you kidding me? Really? It's biodegradable. Um, see the earth coming there? I saw it. So if Gordon McKenzie had asked me to illustrate the book, this is kind of what he would have wound up with right here. You ever think about that? What happens if somebody comes along and says, hey, would you would you illustrate a book for me? Or I've got this paper that I need to do. Would you, would you make that happen for me? And you say, okay, I think I'll do that. Uh, so if I were gonna creatively think about this, I didn't mean for that rooster to turn out completely green. So I think I'll throw some blue in there, just give him a little bit of blue sky colors, and then maybe a little bit of this uh, brown amber. That, that matches the globe just a little bit. Um, little fishing rod in his hand there. Uh, Vision for creativity. All right, so so the story just has to go that quickly sometimes when you just sit down. Is that a great work of art? No, but is it something that I could use for a group of school kids when they come to my house for um, for a little bit of a, a day trip, a field trip, and they sit down and we talk about painting and they'll say, we don't know what to paint. I'll say, just paint where you are right now. Look across the room and see your coffee cup and then paint the tea bag and then paint the sugar cubes. And before you know it, um, you have built something that's kind of fun to do. What if I needed some? Uh, what if I needed some sky up here? Well, you never hardly ever see me use a flat brush, so um, let's just let's just do a little sky with this flat brush. I'm just going to come in and get some water. I'm just going to paint with some water. Sort of mop some water on this painting. You really can't see it. Let me see if I can get it where you can. There it is, see that? Can you see the glare right, wait a minute, there. The glare right there, there it is. Ah, there it is. Okay, so just a little bit of water. Let it just go in like this. A little more water. When you're using this much water on a single piece of paper, will it curl up? Yes. Are your toes cold when you walk in the snow? Yes, it will get a little bit of paint on here and then just drag the paint across. Kind of have that paint kind of wet, just drag the paint across. Here, let me just hold up the paper a little bit like this. Watch this, just drag this across and let it come down the page. There it goes right there, look. That's why I don't take my paper down sometimes, okay? The striations, is that a word, striations? Is what I'm getting here in this painting? You could not brush. This is the fun of watercolor. This is what scares type A people to death. Oh no, don't do it. It's running away. Is that cool? Okay, there you go. Let it alone. Put the brush down, back away from the painting. Could I go in here and clean up some of this red where this run together? Yes, I could go in and get it like this, and then maybe come back 
you know, probably could have done this in different time periods, but hey, I didn't. I did it live, and so the next one, I'll I'll do it better, maybe. And then maybe I won't. Maybe this will be the original piece that I was waiting for, for a long time. Let's go get some green, put a little green on the earth here, like so. You got it. Let's go in here and take a little bit of white titanium white I think you can see me just dancing the brush tip in it right there getting a little damp and then I'm gonna come over here and get my other brush and just splatter some white inside this to make it look like um, now I'm gonna get a little bit of this lamp black and splatter some of that in there like that just to give me some spots in the sky all right is this painting going anywhere probably not except um, in the round can over there the point is for me, I'm fishing for creativity always. I am always have a hook in the water, kind of trolling for what's going to be the next thing that I'm going to draw or put together. That's very vulnerable as a person who does a painting show. Today, I've said about sketching a landscape of El Capitan. No, 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 no. That's not my style. That's not who I am. Today, I'm just gathering with friends, and I'm encouraging you to say, you know what? Uh, some days you have a plan to paint and you've seen it. That's why I keep a journal. And some days you're just inspired by something you read or you wrote or something that came into being like a hairball, a word, bizarre. And you would say, yeah, that painting is pretty bizarre. And I go, no, that's bizarre. That's one right there. Uh, there it is. So it gives you an idea of, of what happens when I do that. Um, okay. Um, let me see here. I'm all about the green rooster. And then I changed it, Chris. I'm sorry. Um, Strash and pa Pat says that is a word. Thank you, Pat. I love that. You know, Strash sounded like a good word. The sky is falling, Billy Groom says. Billy, I just want you to know that that's not, all these years we've been wrong. We, we have been. It's not the sky is falling. It's this guy is falling. <laughs> This, say it a couple times quick. This guy is falling. This guy is falling. You go, well, catch him or he'll be down the stairs. All right. You thought Chicken Little all this time was saying, this guy is falling. This guy is falling. He was pointing to the farmer who was up on the ladder. Boom. Shh, I'll be here all week. Okay. Um, I think it's awesome that you can sketch anything. Micah, I will try to sketch anything. That doesn't mean I'm a good sketch artist. But here's the thing. What's one of my rules? Stay behind the mule if you want to learn how to paint. All right, small piece of paper. Let's do a small painting this morning. This is, uh, I love painting on this paper because it's unpredictable. Since I've been loose today, I'll just stay with it. Here we go. Uh, this is uh, 184 pound mixed media paper. It's uh, slick. It's not as slick as Bristol board. And if you've ever painted on Bristol board, I'm going to tell you, um, watercolor will get away from you on bristol board it looks like this you know how you know it's bristol board it says it right there bristol it has a vellum surface and it is actually pretty slick in fact in one direction it can feel slicker than this but this is pretty slick on the back side too this is at, uh let's see what is the weight of this let me just look and see inexpensive paper it's um uh, it's 100 pound, so this is a little stiffer. It's 184, and I use this a lot in my Rue 857 art classes for people to um, to just sketch on and get a feel for when they really want to do something loose and they're being way too tight. You know, they're bound up and they're going like, but you don't understand, I always paint like this because I'm afraid the watercolors are going to run. Then I'll do a painting uh, with uh, on on mixed media paper that really makes the rooster loose and here we go let me do this rooster that i paint sometimes um that that kind of has his head bowed down like this he's looking down he's got his comb coming out um and his belly's running down here he's his back's down he's his tail is flipped up maybe he has a couple and see look at that it's so loose that you see what happened here that's my finger dragging through the fountain pen already okay and then we'll go in here with the leg and bring his leg down like this. I'm even holding my pen back here to just be a little looser with it today and let it just kind of come out here. Foreshortening, got the leg in the front, leg in the back. Um, all right, Jimmy Buffett song in it. I got friends in the front, I got friends in the back. 
fins to the right, fins to the left, and I'm the only game in town. I believe that's uh, that's a that's a Jimmy Buffett song. I'm real sure. Okay, there you go. So there's there's the concept of just a, a fountain pen, and then let's go in and get some. Uh, um, let's paint get loose. Vim says, "Love painting on hot press paper." Yeah. Okay, Chris. Hot press paper, uh, I do too. Hot press has a great feel to it. This is even more slick than hot press. Okay, so marker paper is even more slick than hot press. So if you like hot press, you might like this, but it's going to get away from you if you're not careful. And so this is what I like to do on this paper. Sometimes I'll just go in and I'll add some water. And you see what's happening already to where my water is hitting the ink. See what's happening? It's causing it to run already. I don't even have to do anything. If I just let it sit there for a minute, that pen starts to open up and blossom. I call it the mushroom effect. How it's starting to bleed down a little bit. It's kind of fun. I hope you guys are using some of this goofiness that I teach here. Um, then let's just go get some of this blue and shake it in there. Look what happens. You notice it's painting itself. I'm not painting right now. And then some of you will say, water's color, look. Don't be afraid of watercolor, okay? Stop. Just, just go. Just create. Okay, something happened right here that I talk to my painting classes about all the time. See that little spot right there? And that little spot right there? It looks like I missed a spot. Would you start missing some spots in your paintings? Just start missing some spots, okay? Those are called holidays. That's what I call them anyway. I don't know anybody else that calls them that, except my dad called them that when I painted for him. He would say, son, that's a holiday. I'd say that all the time, so now you're going to start using it. You're going to go, oh, that's good. But it gets us on the same page. It's simple. You get it. You know what I'm talking about. I'm just using colors that I think would just look kind of radical together this morning. Just going to bounce in some orange in this painting like so. Come in with a little bit of this orange here. Gonna mix a little bit of lead color. Watch this. I'm gonna go here. We'll grab a little of this gamboge. Gamboge, if you live on that side of the tracks in France. Um, uh, saw a movie about France. What was that movie about France that I saw? It's an old documentary the other night. I thought, ooh, it makes me want to go back to Paris. Uh, yesterday had been uh, one year ago. We were in, we're just getting home from our trip to Paris where I did a lot of sketching. Gosh, it was fun. It was fun. Have you watched the movie last night? I don't know if you've seen it or not. It's uh, it's brand new. Um, if you ever watched the Today Show years ago before she retired, Kathy Lee Gifford um, has has done a movie that's called Then Came You. I don't know if you've seen it. Some of you may have already rented it. Kathy Lee, remember who she is? Kathy Lee. You know, my wife and I were went to New York back in the. Goodness gracious, was it the 80s, early 80s maybe? And we went to the Kathy Lee and Re Regis and Kathy Lee show one morning. And we were on the show, and they used to do a giveaway. They would ask a question, audience member, they'd call someone at home and ask a question, and then they would ask an audience member uh, what the answer was. They'd pick out a chair. And so, in my case, um, I won the contest. <laughs> won a... $500 gift certificate to, ready for this, J.C. Penney's. What a great sponsor that was back then. <laughs> and then I think we won a little vacuum cleaner or something. It's kind of fun. But we met Regis and Kathy Lee. And then um, in, in 2012 or 13 or 15 or something, Carol and I are in New York. It's 17 degrees. And she goes, hey, let's go down to the square and I'll get on uh, – ambush makeover on Thursdays. And I'm going like, yeah, right, Carol, you'll, you'll do that. And she goes, no, come on, we'll make a sign. So we, we finish eating at this restaurant. We're walking down the street back to our uh, uh, hotel. She finds a piece of cardboard and we get some markers and she makes a sign. She goes in and brushes her hair over the wrong way, you know, and just kind of looks frumpy. She says, I got to look frumpy. And I'm going, like, huh? And she goes, no, I have to. So we're staying out there freezing. So I get two coffees. And, and so Jill Martin comes out and goes, hey, and she goes, Jill Martin, I need help. And so anyway, she comes over and talks to my wife. They select her for uh, ambush makeover. 
So I go and paint roosters in the green room for about three hours, and she's done to a makeover. So we get to go on the show with Hoda and Kathy Lee. And uh, what, a, what a great story. Just out of the blue, it just happens. You know, don't you love it when that stuff like that just comes to life? And uh, off the bed, Rab, I know it's, it's Australia. It's uh, one in the morning there. So um, good night to you. I'm telling bedtime stories anyway. So anyway, last night there was a... Um, Last night there was a movie on, it's Kathy Lee's new one. And so Kathy Lee came to Charlotte. In fact, she has one of my paintings. Is that kind of fun? Here, here she is right here. This is a little brag, but there it is. There it is right there. Boom. There is uh, me and Carol and Kathy Lee in front of a piece of art um, at an art gallery here in town. And so um, I had some paintings hanging in that gallery at the time. And uh, um, so um, anyway, so she has this movie called Then Came You. And it, uh, it's, I will tell you this, you'll, uh, Craig Ferguson is in it. It's got some innuendos in it. Mm hmm. But, uh, so the humor is, uh, it's not coarse, but it's, uh, it's, but I laughed out loud about five or six times. I really did. I had the fun watching it. It, uh, it was shot well. It was edited well. It had these little vignettes that faded to black that gave you some memory of the story. It was done well. It was done well. Um, all right, so there's a loose rooster on, on that board. Look look what happens. What pins do you use? Uh, Cecile, ask uh, whatever I have. No, I use fountain pins. I use Pentel pins. I use uh, a, a Pentel fountain pen. I use a German-made fountain pen. Any good fountain pen. These are both medium tip nib. It's called a nib fountain pen. This is a fine tip fountain pen. Um, which is kind of a fun little pen for sketching uh, smaller items that you don't want to bleed as much. Just giving you a little example. Didn't know I was going to put this over here, but you ask about the pen, so I'll show you. Here's a little peep that's got a question or uh, getting a little personal time there from Pops. And so what I do then is I just grab a little bit of a clean brush, if I have such a thing on a morning like this, and just come in and I wouldn't touch the pen too much here because you're going to get a little of a green black bleed I know that's going to be interesting but I experiment with this enough to catch what I just said I experiment with this enough to just know what's going to happen there's a little shadow there there's a little shadow there love this little bit of yellow that bled into my pen bleed here um, Isn't it amazing how just a, a little bit of water, some pen marks, and letting the color do what it does, you get this great looking little painting. Um, People often ask me why I use turquoise like that, and I'll tell you, um, it's just a different color. It's not a color that you see every day in design things uh, here and there, but you find it in nature a lot. You find it in, of course, the actual turquoise stone, which my wife has always been a fan of. <laughs> yes. And so, uh, why do I paint roosters? So I can buy a turquoise. No, not necessarily. Okay, so there's a little painting that comes out like this, and. Uh, Sure, you can be what you want. Rudoodles. There you go. Maybe a little bit of splatter up in the sky here. Just get a little bit of blue up here. I'll grab another one. I splatter like this. Uh, did I answer all your questions? Um, I may not have. Um, uh, Cecile, um, yeah, you know what? I use mostly, um, I use some fine line markers sometimes, like all this little blue down here was just done with a pen. On this mixed media paper, the water just takes pens and runs with them. It, it still amazes me today. I didn't even think about it. Because I wasn't taught in school, because I wasn't, because I didn't learn in school, I didn't go to art school. I've never had, any, I've had one art class in my life with a Chinese artist. 
who I loved, uh, it was fabulous, because he said, stop, put the brush down, back away. He didn't say that. That was my quote. I said, why don't you just say, put the brush down, back away from the easel. But um, he would say, enough. You know, Luster Painter, enough. And so I would stop. And so sometimes we don't. We just keep going back and we fiddling with it. We go, oh, that's too much white. That's going to look bad. And you go in and you go, no, stop. Let it alone. Let it live. If you want to change it, change it tomorrow or the next day or come back and look at it. So um, so I use pens that bleed a little bit. I use a stylus pen. It's just a felt tip, fine line felt tip. That's a pen that a lot of architects would use. Really a great doodle pen. It has a bleed to it. Um, I use some old flares. This is a Lamy fountain pen, L-A-M-Y, or Lamy, L-A-M-Y. It's a great fountain pen. Some of you heard me. Um, I use a bamboo brush a lot of times because they move a lot of water and because of the way I paint, it's my style. So over the last 10 or 12 years, I've just developed what is my style. And um, my style is not to make you a painter like me. And that's not what even, that's not even what my painting classes are about. My style in Rue 857, October coming up, the painting class that starts on the 14th of October, I think that's a Wednesday. Um, it's not to make you into a rooster painter. I don't need more rooster painters out there. I need you to use this style to paint whatever it is that's resonating in your head, whether it's your voice, what your voice is, if it's flowers, if it's uh, the composition of, of words and story, or if it's uh, uh, communication, if it's light sketching in your journal. You don't have time when you're wandering through the countryside and you've got your journal with you. You don't, you don't have time to stand there and create these long, long, long sketches. You only have about two minutes to grab something like this and put a little touch of color and go. That's, that's all the time you have most of the time. Now you can snap a shot and go back later, but the journal is a travel journal. You catch up on the train. You catch up when you're waiting on your next bus. You catch up at the coffee shop while you're sipping something from somewhere. That's what the travel journal's for. So we're gonna talk a lot about that in Rue 857. Um, just this quickness of, of doing the journal. Um, kind of fun. All right. And last thing I'm going to, so, uh, so those are my pens. Um, I don't normally just use the cheap pen from the hotel, so it keeps me from stealing those. <laughs> so I carry good pens with me, and I carry a bag, and I carry small colors. Those of you who know about this, some of you are painting out of Altoid boxes now with little paint tins in there with my favorite colors. Uh, you put in here what you want to put in. These, to me, are... They've been my, my favorite watercolor. They've been my only watercolor for many years just because I like the way they flow. I like the way they bleed into each other. I like the boldness of the color. These are American Journey watercolors uh, made by Joe Miller. Cheap Joe's up in uh, Boone is his warehouse store. Um, and yeah, a lot, of, a lot of you are ordering those. And yeah, guess what? A lot of things are backed up. And guess what? The mail is slow, but uh, you will eventually get them. So um, Brian and Megan and the crew up there, Joe, they'll, they'll do a good job. They'll take care of you. So, all right. Now I need a little bit of this bamboo or this uh, turquoise splattered right here, just like that, because uh, never seen an artist. That, and then I'll need a little, little blue in the sky. There it is right there. Just a tad bit right there. Just, and I'm using one brush to just uh, scatter another. That's a little too much. It looks just like I was too contrived there and made it happen. I wanted it a little more abstract. So there we go. So there's a little painting for you. Just done on mixed media paper. Uh, sure, you can be what you want to be. So you get the question. I don't have to ask the question and the answer, right? Leave your comments. Work on your caption so that the, the person viewing this piece of art goes, sure, you can be what you want. Is there anybody out there that doesn't recognize that this peep just asked this Rue? Could, could I could I be a you think I could be a man, wonder if I could be an artist? What version of that question did that peep ask? I don't know. Are you asking yourself that? Hey, hey, hey. That's what fun people do. You know, I think I could play the tuba. I painted a tuba on Saturday, and that was fun. I painted it for, uh, it, it goes out in the mail today uh, for a birthday gift, a commission. And, uh, you know, he's, he's a marching young man in a tuba, and he collects art. What, how could you go wrong? So he, he collects original art from wherever he travels. What kind of young man does that today? More power to you. 
Tin Tail, I got one more painting I want to do for you. I like this painting and it's wet as it can be. So I'm going to slip it on something here. Let's see. Ah, on this book cover right here. Here we go. I'm just going to slide it off on here. So it uh, lays flat down here and dries. Do you remember how I did this? A rough sketch. Look, this paint's still rolling downhill. You see it? It's moving right there. It's taking off. In fact, I, I'm going to do something. Watch. I'm going to take this little piece right here. Start it going downhill just a little bit. Hold it up like this. Ah. See it move right here? Still moving. Now I'm going to lay it flat and let it dry right there. It's gotten to a place that I really love and I like. And I'm laying it down here. And hopefully when I get up in a minute to go make another cup of tea, I don't kick it over. <laughs> Some of you uh, get paintings from me and you get them in little white envelopes like this. Has your name on it right here. Has a little box that says two, not necessarily. It has do not bend, it's got a stamp up here. And so I always sketch on these envelopes. No, I don't, I used to, but now because of COVID, I can't hang out in the post office like I did. And so, um, and I've been so tardy with mailings. Instead of being able to go to the post office like every three days, now I'm going like sometimes every seven days because of the lines out the door and it's just the time period and you can't go. So that's why some paintings have been delayed. Some is just, I'm just, Hadn't gotten to them, but my point is, is that I get to paint with, I carry a pen in my pocket all the time. I'm reaching into my pocket and it's the brother of this pen. Yes, these two pens were identical when I purchased, when my, they were given to me about 20 something years ago. One's a fountain pen. This one I sketch with on a desk. This one I carry every day in my pocket and look at it. All the covers worn off. It's uh, it's very heavy and, and the refill in this pen, okay? The, the refill in this pen, and I had to, uh-oh, I'm almost running out of ink on that one. Glad I looked. The refill on this pen is the refill out of this pen. Okay, so I love this pen so much. This is a Pentel Energy Energel liquid ink. So I, so I sketch with this. So sometimes what I do is I do this little sketch on my envelopes if you have time if you ever get one i do these in the post office so you'll know i've been standing in the post office for a long time some of you have these of course and he'll have his little um handout like that okay his foot feels like a hand i mean i talk about them like they're people so and then over here i'll just paint a little mailbox like this and and it's not it's not to scale because you know this big painting could never go in this little mailbox but i kind of like it like that it just lends to my style. And I'll put a little piece of wood here, some nails in the back, maybe the... And so you may get something just like this from me uh, when you get a painting in the post office. Uh, all right, so what I would do, and so I don't paint on this because this is slick cardboard, but today, what the heck? Let's just paint on it a little bit. So let me use this pen right here. Put a little bit of dark in here. Let's put a little bit in here. Let's put a little on the post. Okay, I like drawing mailboxes. Some of you who were in art class with me know that one of your assignments was to draw a mailbox. You're know, like, is he crazy? What does he want us to draw a mailbox for? Okay, so you see what's happening here? Look at this. The pen is bleeding like crazy on this. Now this, this ink will dry right here and do really well on this. More of a dryer brush brush here. Dryer brush brush? Yes, a dryer brush brush. Um, those of you who have seen me paint before know that you know what I'm reaching for. I bet he's reaching for a little green. Yes, he is, because the mailbox is going to have a little touch of green. A little bit of brown. So tomorrow or the next day, or actually it'll be probably today because I'm on the road tomorrow, uh, I will... Um, I'll put a, uh, a little, one of the paint, one of the bluebirds will go out this week. I sold one of the bluebirds yesterday. They'll, they'll go out in this little painting right there. So there's your, there's your envelope. See how fast? So the, uh, it's not that I'm trying to rush. It's not that I'm trying to hurry. Here's what I really do believe. I believe my quickness and the way I hold my brushes affect the looseness of my painting style. Because if I got in tighter, I would keep messing with it like everybody does until they just muddy it up. So if you're of the style, this is so important, if you're of the style that you like that look and you want the looseness, then just give it some swipes 
Don't be so calculated. Just be a little looser in your style. Push it around a little bit and let it go. Okay? All right. I'm glad we had this talk. <laughs> All right. I got almost five minutes. What am I going to do with that? I'm going to reach down here and get this little piece of paper. One of my favorite pieces of paper, I have some favorites, you know that. So if you ask for pens, you'll ask for paper. One of my favorites is uh, this right here. It's called the paint book. And uh, if you're taking the Rue 857 October class, go ahead and get yourself, if you don't get a paint book, at least if you can afford uh, uh, some 100% rag cotton or 100% cotton paper, at least. Watercolor, 140 pound cold press, but make sure it's cotton. Get something that's got cotton. You're going to love how it absorbs. What you've been watching me do this morning is paper that's slick. It doesn't absorb as quickly, like hot press absorbs much slower. you got a lot more time to work with cold press uh, and especially rag cold press or cotton, rag cotton or just cotton. It catches the pigment immediately and holds on and goes, we're not giving up. So you'll, you'll, your paintings will tend to be more brighter eventually because some of this will dry, uh, some of it on the slicker paper. Anyway, the thing I like about paint book, this is a Kilimanjaro. It's also from Cheap Joe, uh, Joe Miller's paint stuff, uh, Cheap Joe's art stuff. Uh, it has these little pages in between here that are very slick, good sketch pages. You can paint, you can, and I, so I've already started some sketches on here that I've got coming up for some ideas that I had. So I had this with me, so I just started doing some little sketches, and next thing I knew, I had a dozen of them put together, and I thought, ooh, I like those. I'll probably do those someday. So I'm building up my ideas, so I just don't have to sit down in cold turkey and go, oh, but this is a little sketch page in between each piece. Plus, if you're traveling with this, you can paint something here, let it dry a little bit, and it gets a little light sheet of cover on it before you go. I'm about out of this one. Woo two pieces to go. And uh, But it's called the sketchbook. The other paper that I really love, and I love small works, is uh, uh, Arcarello, um and this is Fabriano paper, and it's five by seven. Look, 100% cotton, there it is right there. This is great, and this is ultra white. And the reason I like about ultra white is because my colors just pop off of ultra white. So let's just do a little, uh, let's just do a little um, hen here in two minutes here. Here we go, here she is right here. Little hen, she has a little different waddle, got a little flat comb, um, got a little pop knot there behind her head. She come out, she's gonna be down here, she could This pen is great for doing those little chicken toes, you know? Chicken toes to me have to have a little ball underneath. They're not this all, they're not just sort of pointed like this. They sort of come out and they go down. They got the toenail here. Then they have this little cutback like that. See that? That's kind of a chicken toe to me. You see the difference right there? Some people go, oh, chicken toes are just like this. Nah, not really. Look at them sometime. You'll see those little pads on the bottom of their feet. That's for reaching up on those little peeps and going, get, get back over there. Okay, that's what that's for. All right. Let's see if I can do this in one minute here. One minute left. Kenny, I don't know. I got two minutes. I'll take two minutes. It's my show. Okay. We're gonna, we begin with the hairball, we're gonna end with a hairball. That's funny, I just thought of that right then. <laughs> All right, so there we go. See how fast I'm sketching this? I'm just letting these little hairball pieces go out here. Look at this. Okay, here we go. Let's, uh, let's just grab a brush here. Throw some water on this. Remember, this is rag cotton, so um, or 100% cotton. So I'm just going to throw a lot, lot of water on there like this. Let the pen start to bleed. Grab a little bit of red. Come in right here with her waddle. Just a touch of a comb. Look at that balloon out of there. See that? I just broke the plane right there. So I'm going to go back and get that. Didn't want it there, so I raced it a little bit. Got a little bit of comb. Going to go rinse my brush out in between colors. Get a little bit of yellow right here. And while I got this yellow on this brush, now I'm gonna take off, look at this. Loose, 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 loose.
Note to self, this song sounds like the record stuck. Quiet in here when I'm not talking. <laughs> There's rushing and there's hurry, and I'm rushing and hurrying today. So anyway, you'll get the idea of where I'm going with this. Just a quick little painting to uh, tell a story. Okay, there we go. All right, and so I could get some orange, sort of splatter right in here like this. I could get a little bit of this yellow, sort of splatter in here like this, and a little bit of blue. And now I'm gonna have to go get another cup of tea because I stuck my brush down in my tea. Mm, it happens, I did. Oh, I just dropped it in there. Okay. Uh, okay, there it is. I'm done for Monday. Tomorrow will be Ruse Day. Tuesday, as, as Michelle says. It's a Ruse Day. All right. Thank you so much for being a part of the show today. Thanks for, uh, so what's the caption say is get, get untangled. Dinner's ready. So there's what a mom would have to say. I love, love, love this room. The natural swirl in the chest. Amazing. Thanks for spontaneity. Oh, that was for the last painting, I think. Hilarious. Craig Ferguson is, hey, Craig Ferguson is hilarious. He, I think he, and by the way, he ad-libbed a lot. So, um, um, this is what we do, Mickey says. Love it. Thank you all so much. Grand day for it, Rue. Let it dry before you close the book. <laughs> if you want to. I like Fabriano paper. One of my hens uh, got drunk on rotten apples yesterday. Man, you guys are funny, okay? Uh, caught you late. Kelly catch the replay. Thank you very much. A feather ball of peeps. That's exactly what it was, Pat. Pat, you're keeping up, Pat. No, Pat doesn't keep up. Pat's ahead of me always. Um, have a great day. Thank you very much. And uh, Phil, thanks for being on. And uh, Lee and Mike and uh, all, all my, my guy friends who jump on this. Uh, hey, uh, I'll see you here in the morning. And then I'm packing up and going to head out to do some live broadcast in a couple places. It should be fun. Uh, but uh, I just want you to, before you take your last sip, even if it's got paint in the cup, think about two people right now. Boom. Got mine. Send one of them a text right now. And then if you've painted anything this morning that you're not going to sell somewhere or you don't want yourself, think about just dropping it to them in the mail. Even if it's a little hairball and say, uh, man, I love what you bring to this world. Blessings to you. I'm Michael. I'm out of here like a herd of turtles. Turn this harmonica around and get finished. Thanks for sharing my page. It certainly helps. Thanks for loving it as much as you do.